Good, good, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Citizen Ewa, the platform where we speak truth to power. Good morning, good morning to you all. Now, yeah, we got it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be something. I need you to get involved in this. I need you to get involved. When you're watching this, I need you to get involved. Please continue to share this broadcast. Please continue. We're grateful for your subscription on Citizen Ewa and on, on, on YouTube. We need more and more of that. Facebook, again, they are playing a lot of games. There are a lot of things that we're being prevented from getting access to. And, I, and it's so difficult to get in touch with them. The, 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 it's, you know, there's no direct number. But anyway, we put that to one side. That's why we're saying so continue to support us on YouTube. Now, the thing I want you to look at this, I want to draw your attention to something. And um, this, I'm going to read this to you. The North collectively went for Sharia law without consulting the South. We Southerners collectively exercise our sovereignty by going for self-determination via referendum. It is our inalienable right. And it is. And we maintain that and we stay with that. Whatever anybody says, that's our right. We are the indigenous people to that land. I want to state that now. The other thing I want to mention, I draw your attention to the fact that the North went collectively for the um, Sharia law. I draw your attention to it. And here is something that I want you to look at. Let's read it together, you and me. Now, not this one, sorry, not that one. Uh, yeah, is it? Here we go. That's it. Now, Sharia law implementation in northern Nigeria after 15 years. Now, I'm going to show you something. It's important we go through this in a sequence. So you understand. I want you to look at a date on here for me. This date here. Look at that date. 27th of October 1999. Remember that date. I want you to remember that date. Now I'm going to show you something. Then I will read this topic. When I do that, it will make sense where I'm going. Now, let's go and do this. Uh, here we go. So we're going to bring this up for you. Um, it's we just need to just break this down, um, and I think you know it will become apparent to everybody when you see what I'm about to show you now. I want you to look at the Constitution of Nigeria, the folk so called Constitution. We know it's a promulgation decree, we know that it's a fraud, it's a fraud. Don't you know, let's not get that twisted. There's no doubt it's a fraud because it says 20 promulgation decree number 24 of 1999, it's a fraud. Okay, now, I want you to draw your attention to one, two dates. On the 5th day of May 1999 was when this was signed. You see? 5th day of May 1999. You can see that it was signed in Abuja. Let me bring that up. I'll bring it up so you can... Uh, sorry. Oh. I'm trying to bring it up. I don't know how can... How can I bring that up? Yeah, you got it. So, so you can see that. You can see there... It's signed on the 5th day of May 1999, signed by General Abdul Salam Laji Abubakar, head of state. You can see that. So there's no dispute. Now let's go back to the date on this document I'm showing you now. Let's go back. Now go and look at that date, 27th of October 1999. So May, June, July, August, September, October. That's six months after the constitution, right? Six months after the constitution. You get that? You, the, 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 the promulgation decree. Six months after that, yeah? Now, let us read the process in which they implemented Sharia across the 12 states. And there is some way I'm going with that. You remember I said that they didn't, uh, what was the word I used? Remember I said they collectively went for Sharia law without consulting the South. What we need them to do for us now in this discussion is to tell us where they need to tell us at what point did they seek the consent from the other states in the south or in fact the whole nation and say we want to go for Sharia law what do you think at what point there is nothing so far they need to provide that because if they can go for Sharia law and it is not considered a secession and Sharia law is, not, is something we are not happy with. We in the South don't want Sharia law. They are imposing it on us. 
And when you impose on somebody, that is secession. We are now saying we don't want it. We are not imposing on the North. They now want to impose Sharia law across the whole of the country. We are saying, for that reason, we are going for self-determination. We don't want any part of that. We don't agree with the, the Sharia law. We don't agree with the Constitution. We, don't go, we want to go for self-determination. Why is it okay for them to impose their will on South? Why is that okay? I'd just like to know. Why is that okay? Now, let's read this document. Sharia implementation in Northern Nigeria after 15 years. The reintroduction of Sharia law in Northern Nigeria was launched in Gusau, the capital of Zamfara State, on 27th of October 1999. Prior to that, Sharia law in Northern Nigeria was limited to civil matters and excluded criminal matters. By the end of 2001, 11 mm -hmm. other states, and I'm going to read them to you, Bauchi, Borono, Gombe, Jigawa, Kaduna, Kano, Katsina, Kebi, Niger, Shokoto, and Yobe, and a number of local government areas within them had joined Zamfara in enacting a wide-ranging legislation aimed at making their jurisdiction more Sharia compliant, incorporating both civil and criminal matters than they had formerly been in some. All Sharia states reinstated Islamic law in their jurisdiction. Sharia states also enacted Sharia law courts, establishing the new inferior, inferior Sharia court with original jurisdiction to apply to a full range of Islamic law, civil and criminal Muslims, uh, criminal to Muslims. A wide range of other legislation was enact is enacted at particular social vi vices and on Islamic behavior, such as the consumption of alcohol, gambling, prostitution, on a defined media, and an excessive mixing together of unrelated males and females. A range of other ulama institutions were established, established. Sharia commissions and councils of ulama um, with... Um, advisory and executive functions, zakat and endowment boards and committees for the collection and distribution of zakat and administration of wak wakifs, hisba organizations, to monitor and try to enforce Sharia compliance and others. The implementation of the Sharia law raised fears of the Islamization. Are you listening now? All the way back in 1999-2000. It raised fears, the fears that we are talking about now. When you raise fears, it means that we are not happy. This is not something that we all, we don't all subscribe to it in that nation. Did they seek consent? Did they seek the southern consent before applying Sharia law? Did they? That's the question I want to know. And if they're saying it's their right to do that if they so wish, is it not our right to go for self-determination? Because we do not support Sharia law. Before they talk about one Nigeria, they broke one Nigeria by this action. They broke one Nigeria by this action. Read it again. Let me go on. Now, the implementation of the Sharia law raised fears of Islamization of society and sparked a wave of interreligious violence. It actually caused violence. Now, when we are talking about self determination, please. Point out where we have gone to cause violence. Please point it out. I'll wait. Please point it out. I said I will wait. Get me documents. Get me dates. Get me times. Get me all of those things. In just this document alone, it confirms that the... I'm going to read it again. It sparked a wave of interreligious violence that claims thousands of lives and destruction of property. This was all instigated by the Sharia. The Sharia said, in my place, I have the right to, if I do this, whatever, you know, all of this nonsense. We are going for self-determination. We are not, in, we are not resorting to violence. The violence is coming from the Sharia law, from the imposition of the fraudulent constitution. This is, so it is okay for the North to impose its will on us in the South. But we cannot impose our will on the South. We're not even going to the North. We're not trying to... The North can keep his back and can keep Sharia law if they want. We are saying in the South, we want to be independent. We are indigenous to that land and we have the right to self-determination. Are you following me? Are you following me? I will do the live broadcast about this, but I wanted to play this first, prepare our minds for this. Now, let's go on. So... The interreligious violence, and I'm telling you, make no mistake, this interreligious violence was caused. If you look at the majority of the destruction, they destroyed Christian properties, Christian homes, 
pastors, me, countless people that Christians have been killed by all under the guise of this, this Sharia law. We have been talking about self-determination. We've gone around peacefully protesting and we are arrested for no, not killing anybody. How many people who have killed, how many Muslims, Sharia law people, have they arrested for killing Christians? How many? I will wait. Point number two. How many? How many? Number one, we don't resort to violence when we're talking about self-determination. Number two, how many, how many Muslims who are talking Sharia law that have killed people, known people that have killed people, have they arrested? Is that not an imposition of their will over us? We don't want it. And they did not consult us before implementing Sharia law. And they now want to put it across the country. Can you see these double standards? Can you see the double standards? I hope you can. Now, let's go on. Let's go ahead. So now, this research project explores the trajectories and consequences of Sharia implementation in the north between in, in, Niger, in northern Nigeria between 2000 and 2015. What has happened in the course of the Sharia implementation over the 15 years? The six research teams looked into courts, Hizbah police, Zakat, Wakaf, institutions and consequences of gender relations, the impact of ulama and a wider perception of Sharia implementation. So the document goes into that. I, I, there's more stuff. I'm going to see if I can get the PDF out. I don't know if I can find it. So the, the study, let me see if I can find the study. I'm just trying to, if they will let me. Oh, they've, they've black graded out. I can't go into it. Can I? Let me see. Let me just see. Okay, they're not going to let me do that. But that is, what I've just showed you is enough anyway. It is pretty enough to get one minute, please. I mean, I'm going to go back. Okay, now, research. Research groups, regions in the media. So, now you can see. Anyway, we don't need to, you know, this is a, this is a, a UK government. This is University of Oc Oxford. You can see there. Um, so, you can actually see. The key things that you need to look into is there is no doubt the link between violence and Sharia law. And the imposition of Sharia law on people that do not wish it to be imposed on them. Very much like they are now trying to impose us on or across the whole country, Sharia law. Where was the consent from all of us in the South before they imposed Sharia law? That's the question we're asking. That's the question we are asking. So we are going for self-determination. Uh, let me see if I can find a document to help me uh, 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 clarify this. Because the Ninas document, there is a Ninas document that is actually very good at bringing this out. And I want to bring it to your attention. Uh, let me see. How can I do this? Right. Okay. Yes, good. I'm just going to go into this one. It's easier this way. So you can see Ninas. Okay. This is why we're demanding referendum. We are justified. The people who are imposing the Sharia law on us, they are not indigenous to us. So now, so there you go. So I'm putting this here. Let me just make sure, I want to make sure you see it. You can see that this is the Alliance territory, yeah? And that's the Sharia territory. Now they did not seek, they did not seek. Look at, you see, you can see the Alliance territory is definitely more than the Sharia law. But they are trying to impose their will on us by putting Sharia across the whole nation. We don't want it. We are saying we are going for self-determination. And they tell us to believe in one Nigeria. The fact that they imposed, and I'm going to go back again. The fact that they imposed Sharia law on the 27th of October, 1999, six months after the new so-called constitution. Isn't it interesting that the military did not see it fit? To say, no, 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 we have a new constitution. The military. Let me show you again. The military. Yeah? Let us read the name of the person who is on there. What does it say? It says, General Abdul Salam, Alaji Abu Bakr. Is that not Muslim? I'm just asking. 
and that means that he's following, he's very much in line with the thinking of those who imposed Sharia law. So they didn't stop that. They didn't see connect, consent from the people. Yet again, now when we are speaking about self-determination, they meet us with violence. We are telling them that we have the right for self-determination. They meet us with violence. Let me show you the kind of violence I mean. Uh, one second, please. I have some videos if I can bring it back. Uh, no, I'll keep it here. I'll keep it here. No, no. Do this first. One minute. One minute, please. So I'm keeping this. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to keep this picture there. Whilst I do a bit of digging on this side here. One second, please. Just want to get you something. I think I need, I need, I need to give you a bit more context to this. Uh, I know there's some things I've got that, I, that may prove what I'm trying to say here. But I, I just need to make sure I get it out and then show you. It's important. Under the guise of the police and the military, they arrest, they shoot, they kill southerners for going for self-determination. Whereas, the Fulani terrorists or the, the, the Sharia law and the Fulani terrorists are protected. The Sharia law, I ask again, I maintain, how many people have been arrested for, for, for preaching Sharia law, carrying out crimes against people under the guise of Sharia law and, 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 and not being prosecuted? Many. The countless. Countless. So I want you to understand what has been done here. It is okay for them because of the likes of General Abu Salam, who imposed the fraudulent constitution, who is also a Muslim. They are giving themselves the support to impose on us this region here. Let me show you. To impose on us the alliance territory, Middle Belt, uh, Yoruba Nation, and uh, Lower Niger, as stated by Ninas. They are imposing on us with military force. You see, barely six months after this uh, promulgation decree number 24 of 1999, barely six months. Oh no, let me just do that. Barely six months after this promulgation decree of 1999, they did this. And, they, and the, the military, those who imposed it, the government, they all went. Nobody, they didn't stop them. They did not seek consent before imposing Sharia law. We are now saying we don't want Ruga. When we say we don't want Ruga in the north, in the south, oh no, you can't have that. Did they ask us before they imposed Sharia law on us? They didn't ask. They did not, they did not ask how it was going to affect the unity, the so-called unity of Nigeria. They, didn't, they just imposed it. Please, I want you to share reason with me. Is what I'm saying. Does it make sense to you? If it makes sense, make sure you share this broadcast. Is it making sense to you? Now, I want to find one video. I mean, I know I've got loads, but I just need to find one video that exemplifies what I'm saying here. Um, and I, I, I will take me some time to dig it out, but I'm, you know, uh, let me see. Uh, there is so many videos out there, and I'm just going to, I will probably dig something out somewhere. Um, I'm trying to see. In fact, in fact, I don't need to go far. I mean, there's options, there's ideas I'm going to give you. There are ideas I'm going to give you. Um, not ideas, they're facts. I think I've got some pictures. Let me see if I've got something else. Now, that is Oloye, you know, doing a protest. Can you see? That is evidence of us. That is Oloye doing a, doing a peaceful protest. Um, I think it's in uh, or your state or something. I can't remember which state. That is doing a peaceful protest. That is us. That is us. That is what we do. Now, I'm going to bring you a picture of what happens with Sharia law. When they're talking about Sharia law. I need to try and get you that picture. So, Hold on to that. Let's go and get you a picture when they're imposing their Sharia law. I'm just trying to contrast to you. Look at that. Look at how many people there were. No violence. 
That's the south. That is the alliance region, territory. That is the alliance territory. Now, let's go and bring you... Uh, um, let me bring this up now. Yeah, okay. I'm going to bring something up. And when it's ready, you will see it. Uh, LinkedIn. Sorry about that. No, I don't want that one. I'm not interested in that one. This one is what I'm looking at. Sorry about this. Um, I just want to bring you... Okay. Okay, now. So now let us uh, look at what is going on. Now. Now. I want you to listen to this report. Labiru Yahaya Fagir sees himself as an ordinary trader trying to survive. Listen to this report. But in Nigeria, his ethnic group Hausa and his religion Islam have become associated in the public mind with the murderous Muslim sect Boko Haram. Thank you. The group has launched brutal attacks in its effort to impose Sharia law in the country, killing more than a thousand people, says the chief of defense. Christians, police, and government structures, their main targets. But the bombing... Did you hear that? Christi Christians, police, and government structures are the targets. Boko Haram and Sharia law. Can you see this intertwined link between the two? Can you see that? The, what consent was sought before the imposition of Sharia law in 1999, 27th of October? What consent? That's the question. If there is no consent from us in the South, they have no business telling us whether or not we can go for self-determination or not, which, of course, is our inalienable right. Are you following me? I'm going to do a live broadcast about the later on, but I want us to think about that, those of us in the South. Now, let's carry on and listen to this broadcast, to this, uh, this, 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 this clip here. ...of the United Nations headquarters in the capital Abuja last year and the kidnap and murder of two Europeans in the Northwest have elevated Boko Haram's once purely domestic threat into an international concern. For now, they have a third grade affiliation with Al-Qaeda and it is a matter of time that their affiliation may be upgraded to full status and that is when it is going to be difficult for this issue to be addressed and to be tackled domestically. This is what we said. This was said all the way in 2011. Oh. This was said all the way in 2011. Again, I'm asking you the question. What consent was sought before the imposed Sharia law in any place in Nigeria? What consent was sought? That's the question. I want that is a, what, That's going to be the topic that I'm putting up. What consent was sought? before they impose Sharia law in any part of Nigeria. Yeah? Let me just make sure I write it down, because that will be the, what you will see as a topic, you know, on this broadcast. When you see it, share it. By the Fulanese, yeah? Before the imposition of Sharia law in Nigeria. So, I'm just going to put it down. One second, please. I want to make sure. Uh, so, because now they are saying before we do anything in the South, we need to seek their permission. Before you do anything in the South, if you're going to say you want to ban cattle grazing, oh, they can't do anything. The North has to say. We are asking a question. What um, uh, consent 
because you have to seek the consent of the whole of one Nigeria. If you don't seek consent, there is no one Nigeria. And that is barely six months into the new, that propagated decree. So it is okay for you to go and impose Sharia law on us without seeking consent. But when we talk about we're going for self-determination, oh, we didn't seek consent from you. Can you see the double standards here? I hope you can see the double standards here. Let's listen on to this broadcast. And I'm not going to stay too long, but I just want to, when you get this broadcast, please share. Nigeria's commercial capital, Lagos, has so far been untouched by Boko Haram violence. But since the UN bombing, security at the US consulate here and government buildings has been stepped up. The governor here has even demolished makeshift mosques near his office, he says, for security reasons. Nigeria has a long history of ethnic and religious conflict. But for years now, Muslim and Christian have lived side by side, most united by poverty and the daily struggle to earn a living. Uh, please, I remember, I want you to note that poverty is being engineered under here, under this, by the promulgation decree. And I will show you one more document, which I, I like to bring evidence to things because I don't like to just talk. Um, I, I come with evidence, um, you know. He that, you know, uh, 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 no, anyway, you'll come back to me. Um, he that wants equity must come with clean, clean, clean hands, they say. Something like that. You know where I'm going with that. Now, uh, sorry, one minute. I want to just check something here. I digress a little bit. Ooh, yeah, got it. Now, I want to show you something. Go here. Go to www.citizenay.org. I don't believe in that constitution, by the way. Uh, we're looking for the new proposed constitution, which is the one above. But this is one we have currently. I want to take you to just type in 75. Yeah. Exclusive lists. Yeah. The exclusive list has what has impoverished millions of Southerners. Because they've used that via the, that exclusive list to prevent us from having access to our own resources. Number 36 or 39, something like that. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Is it? Uh, let me just see. There you go. Number 39. Mines, minerals, including oil fields, geological surveys, they are all centrally held. So if it's in your if it's in your state, it's controlled by the federal government. And who controls the federal government? The Fulanese. That is all under this exclusive list. This is the fraud. And they're using the religion to take our land more and more. Let me just go back to the top. So you know. So you can see there, Federal Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is a lie. That's another lie they told you. In actual fact, it is this. It is a promulgation decree. I will keep reminding you this. I will keep reminding you. We need to keep doing this to wake ourselves up. You can see at the top, Promo Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria, promulgation decree number 24 of 1999. This was imposed on the indigenous people. The Fulanese are not indigenous to our part. They come from Futajalon. Plain fact. Now, so let's go back again. And continue. Here we go. The resentment towards Muslims in general is growing, Fajr tells me, as violence escalates in the name of Islam. If they are really genuine to you Muslim people, they cannot do this thing. Because Islam teaches us to love your neighbor. All of this is a ploy, you. The same people who are telling you Islam teaches us to love our neighbor are the same ones who are instigating the crime. Oh. Islam is what they're using to carry it out. It's all a part of the plan. Don't fall for it. Do not. Southerners believe in true religion of, in, and, and, and they follow it uh, in, in, you know, with, the, with the rules. They don't believe in, in, in violence. But what they are doing is playing a double game. They are on both sides. They're telling, oh, we're preaching peace. But they are the ones instigating. They are behind this. Again, remember. They did not seek consent before they imposed it on us in the South, in, 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 in the country, and now increasingly across the South. Are you following me? Let's go on. Whoever he is. Do you want Nigeria to be ruled by Sharia law? There's no any Muslim that can say you don't want to, to rule by Muslim people, but, but in Nigeria, I don't think say it's more closer to this travel. Even you go. Can you see that? He didn't answer the question. He says, no, closer this happening. Are we not heading towards Islamic nation? Are we not? And if we are, 
which everybody knows, was consent sought from us in the South? Was consent sought from us in the South? They didn't seek consent. That is why we are going for self-determination. We are justified and entitled to go for self-determination. It is our inalienable right. When you get the broadcast, share it far and wide. To the north, you can see a, a Muslim one is more than a Christian woman. With trust. And they are keep that's that look, let me go back. That what he said there is actually not factual. Let me go back one second. I'm gonna show you something. Uh, for those of you that saw earlier on, let me bring you back to the to, into the book so that you don't say citizen AY is saying something. It says here, you know, says here. Um, the, this research project explores the trajectories and consequences of Sharia implementation, implementation in northern Nigeria between 2000 and 2015. What has happened in the course of the Sharia implementation over 15 years? Um, the research looked into courts, Hizba, Zakat, Wakaf institutions, and consequences of gender relations, the impact of ulama and wider public perceptions of Sharia implementation. Let me give you an, an even, you know, the, 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 the other thing. The, the, the increase in in, in social uh, in in, um, um, in in attacks by Fulanese or against non-Muslim um, people living in the north that and they've not been prosecuted. Again, did they seek the consent of the whole community? Did they? Did they? I'm asking a question. What do you think? Now, let's uh, go back to the broadcast. I'm sorry I'm just bringing it, you know. I know I'm flipping it now. We're going to finish this in about a few minutes or so. Between government and the guerrilla group at an all-time low, there are those calling for a foreign Arab nation to mediate talks, saying a military crackdown is failing. If force could have ended the group, it could have done so a long time ago. For now, force appears to be the only form of communication both sides are committed to. And Kebili Mabuse, CNN, Lagos, Nigeria. So, anyway, so there, you can see the beginnings of all of the, what we're saying now. And, you, and I've got, I take you back to what I'm reading, what I, the, 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 the document I read to you. It's the research document. Again, I'm reading to you the 11 states. Those 11 states, between 27th of October, 1999, and the end of 2001, 12 states in the north without seeking consent from the rest of the country became Sharia. But when we say we do not want Sharia in the south, we want self-determination, they tell us we don't have the right. Who gave them the right to impose Sharia law in any part of Nigeria? We will wait for that answer. What do you think? I'm posing a question to all Southerners. What do you think? What do you think about this? Do you see what has happened? I want you to take, pay particular close attention in two dates. I'm going to show you. Not that one. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah. It is there. Yes. Two dates. 5th of May, 1999, the date when they actually promulgated into law the fraudulent constitution. 5th of May, remember that date. And then this other date, where they did not seek consent, the 27th of October, 1999. Barely, so, so May, so June, July, August, September, October. Five months. Almost six months, yeah, into the pro promulgation decree 24 of 1999, they started without consent making states, the following 11 states Bauchi, Barono, Gombe, Jigawa, Kaduna, Kano, Katsina, Kebi, Niger, Shokoto, Yobe, along with Zamfara. They all became Sharia without seeking consent of the whole of the nation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, it is okay for them to impose their will on us in the South. 
but it's not okay. And we are not imposing our will on them in the, in the north. We are saying we don't want the imposition. We have the right to self-determination. They did not seek our consent before imposing it. And now they want to spread the whole of the Sharia law across the nation. Now you see that there is no such thing as one Nigeria. They have actually, they are the secessionists. The Fulanis are the secessionists for imposing Sharia law on us without our consent. I put that to you. What do you think? Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Citizen Network, the platform where we speak truth to power. Please, as you're watching, I'd like you to go ahead and subscribe. Now, let's uh, do this. Please subscribe to Citizen AY on YouTube. We need your help and support. The more you support us, the more you hit the notification button, the more you give subscribe to us, the more you subscribe, we, this message reaches more and more people. And Facebook are still doing their nonsense, so we can't rely on them. I don't know, they're playing some games. They're letting some people have it and then letting others, they're restricting others. So there's a lot of things that has been done. Um, my live broadcast should be getting some sort of benefits, but they're denying me that. They showed me a paperwork that I can do it, but when I try to do it, it doesn't happen. So I need your support. It's very, very important. Um, I've got the evidence of what I'm saying, by the way, when it comes to Facebook. But I'll, the time and place will come when I will do that. Right now, our focus is trying to make people aware of this information. So please do share, share, and share. You're watching Citizen AY, the platform where we speak truth to power. We only deal in one currency, truth. We are the Sorosuke generation with evidence, such as we are presenting to you now. What do you think of the evidence? Do you agree that the government... The Fulani government that we have, the Fulanis, have without consent imposed Sharia law on Nigeria without the consent of all the people of Nigeria. That's what I put to you. What do you think? Let us have your comments. Leave your comments. Please share this broadcast. Let's have a debate among ourselves as Southerners. This is not about the Fulanis. The Fulanis are not indigenous to our land. This is for indigenous people who are suffering daily at the hands of the non-indigenous people. We are the indigenous people who are suffering daily at the hands of the non-indigenous Fulanese to our land. Taking our resources, raping our women, killing our men, abducting us, preventing us from having guns from, the, 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 from protecting ourselves, killing our farmers and not paying compensation. I could go on. All of the positions are in Fulani hands. And yet, we are the indigenous people. The question remains. Why is it that the, Fulan, the Fulanese, did, they didn't seek consent before imposing Sharia? Is that not secessionist? Is that not a secessionist act? I'll put that to you. I might, I'll frame that question in a way or something. But you're watching Citizen AY, the platform where we speak truth to power. Watch this video. Listen to the, the to the, read the context. You can read what I put on the screen there. You can you know you can peruse it. Have a have a read. I read through the whole thing earlier on. Have a read at it. Listen to the parts, and I might even put some of the links maybe later on. I don't know. We'll see. But I want you to leave your thoughts and comments. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Citizen the platform where we speak truth to power. Thank you and goodbye.